Conclusion Do it now seriously. I know that a lot of people are under the impression that they will expand their business or create sales and content funnels when the time is right. Here's the problem. The time will never be right. If you are sure that you want to do this, decide to do it now. Commit to it. If you are going to rely on whether it feels right or not, you're going to be waiting for a long time. Before you know it, you're going to be buying one product after another and end up failing to lift a finger to turn the businesses that those products talk about into a reality for yourself. Watch each video closely. I know that at this point you're really pumped up. You probably want to jump in with both feet, but do yourself a big favor. Watch each video closely. Understand what's involved. Pay attention to how each step works with each other so you don't make a mistake. Remember, you're building a business. This means that you have to set things up right the first time around and then you optimize. You can't do things in a half-baked way. You can't just build it and then backtrack. Try to get things as well put together in the beginning so that you can start to produce results and you remain motivated to keep optimizing your business. Have faith. Finally, you must have faith in yourself. You have to understand that people have been pulling off the things that I'm talking about in this training for a long time. They're making good money. If they can do it, why can't you? Please understand that you're not much different from other people. Sure, you may have zero budget, but you have a lot of time. Sure, you may not have an in-depth knowledge, but you have your sense of curiosity and excitement. Whatever the case may be, stop making excuses for yourself to delay and start taking action today. Introduction. A lot of people who try to sell anything online simply are not doing a good job of it. This is the main reason why the vast majority of people trying to sell affiliate products simply can't make a living off their online marketing. It's not because these people are dumb. It's not because they are incapable of making money online. Please understand that just because you have heard that you can make a lot of passive income on the internet doesn't necessarily mean that you just need to roll up your sleeves and put up a website and, all of a sudden, all this money will come. I hate to break it to you, but the whole idea of build it and they will come is just a pipe dream. It may have worked 10 years ago, but believe me, it doesn't work today. There's just simply too much competition out there. In fact, according to several estimates, every single day, over 2 million pieces of fresh online content is uploaded every single day. Think about that for a second. Try to wrap your mind around that figure. 2 million pieces. So it doesn't matter what kind of niche you're in. It doesn't matter how obscure or esoteric your niche category may seem to you. There is simply too much competition out there. And to think that you just put up a website and suddenly all these people would come banging on your digital door and handing you their hard-earned dollars is simply a fantasy. Disabuse yourself of that thinking if you want to have a chance of actually making money online. How the online money-making game is truly played. If you truly want to create passive income using online properties, listen up. You have to create a sales funnel. Just because you put up an online article doesn't mean that people who find that article will find it so compelling and so persuasive that they would hand you dollars. It doesn't work that way. Instead, you have to look at them as sheep. That's right. You have to be a shepherd. You have to understand that for people to look for your content, deep down inside, they're already interested in whatever you are pushing. Maybe you're selling a service. Maybe you're trying to promote some sort of affiliate product. Maybe you run an online store. It doesn't matter. People who read your content are somehow, some way, already interested. But the problem is the way you position your offering plays a big role in how they would respond. You have to look at the situation from their perspective. When was the last time you bought anything online? Chances are it hasn't been all that long. When you were looking for something online, you're not looking to hand Joe Blow 10 of your hard-earned dollars. No, instead, you're thinking to yourself, I have a problem. I'm looking for a solution to my problem. I'm looking for a page on the internet that would convince me that they understand my problem and they could lead me to the right solution. This is how most people shop online. In fact, a lot of people who buy stuff buy it impulsively. It's not because they don't want to spend their money. It's just because they came across the right materials that spoke to their needs. Even if their needs are not of the highest priority, they come across online content that appealed to those needs in the right way, so they end up parting ways with their hard-earned money. You can do the same. It all boils down to creating the right sales funnel. 
What is a sales funnel anyway? Look at how a funnel is shaped. It is like an inverted pyramid. It's very wide at the top, and as you get closer and closer to the actual exit section of the funnel, it gets narrower and narrower. You should think of everything you do online as some sort of funnel. As each prospect gets closer and closer to the bottom end of the funnel, there's less and less prospects. This is a good thing because the funnel works to filter people based on their interest. If you don't set up such a system, it's going to be very hard for you to convert people. That's the bottom line. Whether you make your money through ad clicks using the AdSense monetization platform, or you sell affiliate products, or you sell your own services, or you run your own online dropshipping store, it doesn't matter. You're trying to convert people from simple clickers of links and readers of your content to cold, hard cash. The sales funnel model helps you craft together working strategies that would help you turn your content and traffic into cash. This training teaches you how to optimize your sales funnel. My goal is to help you realize key strategies that will help you maximize conversions and thereby maximize your profits. What is a sales funnel? A sales funnel is essentially a filtration system. There are many different types of eyeballs your link or content will attract on the internet. Most of these are not interested in buying, at least not right now. Your sales funnel helps you process all these people to maximize the amount of dollars you can get out of them. Most sales filters are not set up the right way. A lot of marketers fail because they think they have a sales funnel. What they have is a leaky bucket. Know the difference. A sales funnel does the following. Sales funnels must demonstrate the value of a particular solution. Sales funnels must speak to the needs of people looking for a solution. Sales funnels must build trust in a particular category of solution. Sales funnels must direct potential buyers to a specific category of solutions leading to a specific type of product. Sales funnels must build trust in a specific product offering to the exclusion of competing offers. If your sales funnel doesn't do all the above, you have a leaky bucket. At best, you are settling for cents on the dollar. At worst, you are losing money and are left confused as to why. How do you know your sales funnel is working? This is actually very easy. Either you're making the most amount of dollars from your online activities or you're not. That's the bottom line. It's very easy to figure out. Don't obsess about traffic. Don't get all excited about click-through rates. Don't put too much faith on how many people engage with your content on social media. All those are important, but the most important metric is profit. To generate profit, your funnel must convert. Focus on conversion at the end of the funnel first. Then work back up the funnel to maximize the effectiveness of each step prior to conversion. Sales funnels have different components. This is where people screw up. They think that a sales funnel is just all about converting traffic into cash. They don't realize that you need to give people information so they would trust you enough to buy whatever it is you were pushing. Accordingly, a sales funnel is made up of two parts, the content funnel and a conversion funnel. Don't confuse the two. They are not one and the same. They overlap each other, but they are not one and the same. A conversion funnel takes traffic and turns it into cash by getting the prospect to go through a series of pages or blocks of text within one page. As the person progresses through each section, that person develops the following. First, they get the impression that you know what you're talking about. They start to believe that you are knowledgeable enough about whatever it is you're talking about for them to continue to read your stuff. This can be in one page. This can be in a couple of pages or this can take place in a series of pages, or it can take the form of a series of emails. Regardless, it's all about building credibility. An effective conversion funnel sets things up in such a way that the more your prospect reads your stuff, the more they believe you. This ultimately creates enough trust for your prospect to do what you want them to do. This can take different forms. You can ask them to fill out a form, and when they fill out the form, you get paid by a sponsor. You can ask them to click on a sales link that says, Order Now. When they buy something, you get a commission. You can ask them to enter their email address and join your mailing list. Regardless of the form it takes, the goal of a conversion funnel is the same. It's all about getting traffic from the Internet, filtering it down to a core group of people who believe you and trust your authority enough to do what you want them to do. What is a content funnel? A content funnel is a series of blog posts, articles, and pages both on your site and on third-party websites 
that step visitors through different stages of trust. At first, you get them to understand and believe that you are credible when it comes to a specific body of knowledge. For example, if people are looking for tips on how to deworm their dogs, your content funnel would start with material that answers basic questions regarding the deworming process. When people read these, they get the information that they're looking for, but they're probably looking for other information. Now that they know how to deworm a dog, is there a best way to do it? Is there a product that makes it as quick, painless, and convenient as possible? Your content funnel takes care of all these questions, but it all does it in the context of building greater and greater trust in your authority. It starts with establishing in the minds of the reader that you are knowledgeable and credible enough about the basic questions that they're asking. If they like what they read and they still have other questions regarding which solution is the best, they can click the link and then you would lead them through your comparison of the different types of solutions out there. Again, these are not necessarily individual products. These can be just different ways to purge your dog. You can compare the different ways of purging your dog. There's a 100% organic way, and then there are the traditional chemical ways, so on and so forth. You compare these then to highlight to the reader that you can be trusted because you know enough to be able to compare, and then you suggest a specific solution, and then when they click through to that, they end up in a trust page. This is where basically you earn their trust by spelling out, usually in the form of an in-depth report or a review of the pros and cons of a specific product or solution. From here, you can then convert them. You can link them to a conversion funnel, or you can get them to sign up to a mailing list. Effective sales funnels start with product knowledge. Intimately know whatever it is you are promoting. Whether you're selling a product or service or you're an affiliate pushing someone else's stuff, it doesn't matter. You must establish some level of expertise in whatever it is you are pushing. If you're clueless regarding what you're selling, how do you expect to gain credibility and authority in the eyes of people you're trying to get to buy from you? That's just not going to happen because you did not put in the time, effort, and energy to achieve that level of knowledge. Effective product knowledge is vital for both conversion funnels and content funnels. Some key questions you need to ask. What problem does your product solve? Think in basic terms. If you're selling something, it's because it solves a problem. If you're a real estate agent, you're selling a home. Why do people need a home? It's not what you think. They need it for location. Some people buy it for status. Other people buy it for a lifestyle. Understanding these different reasons and navigating your way around them enables you to tie these reasons with certain audiences so you can speak their language. Can you speak your audience's language? Most people always ask themselves, what's in it for me? You must understand this question and you have to answer it in the same language as the person you're trying to sell to. Otherwise, you're not going to make a sale. It's just that simple. You must present your product's value proposition in clear terms that readily answer the questions your customers are asking in their heads. Can you speak in terms of benefits? When people buy a Mercedes Benz, it's not because they're just looking to get from point A to point B. If that's all they wanted, they could have bought one of many cheaper brands. You must speak their language. What is their reason? They're looking for luxury. They're looking for tangible proof that they can show to other people that they have arrived at a higher social status. That's the whole point of buying a Mercedes-Benz, a Ferrari, a BMW, or a Porsche. You must zero in on that complex of competing needs and speak the language of your prospect. Can you split up different benefits and express them carefully? It's very important to understand that when people end up on your conversion page, that these people are not identical. For example, back to the Mercedes-Benz scenario, different people would buy different Mercedes-Benz for different reasons. We know that if people are just looking for basic transportation, they're probably not going to pick a Benz. That's a very expensive option just to take care of basic transport needs. With that out of the way, you must list all the potential benefits people would look for in a branded, sophisticated and prestigious German automotive brand. It's not all about social status. Some people are looking for the utmost quality. In other words, they're thinking to themselves, if I buy the very best product, I know there's a high likelihood that I won't break down in the middle of nowhere. Other people buy a Mercedes Benz because they have a certain affinity to the Mercedes Benz's engineering tradition. When you're creating a conversion funnel, 
You have to zero in on all these potential reasons and benefits, and then you have to prioritize them. Which are more likely? Which can be tied to questions? Which are more practical? But whatever you do, your sales funnel must speak to all these different needs to push people down the funnel. Remember, different benefits appeal to different people. So when you get all these clicks from your paid Facebook ad campaigns or from your organic article marketing, your sales funnel must have enough information in it to appeal to different types of people. You can't just assume that everybody who lands on your page are trying to meet the same needs. That's like a Mercedes ad just basically saying that it's all about luxury. That's a great ad if you're sure that almost all the people looking at that ad are looking for luxury. But what about the person who is looking for the very best engineered car he or she could find? What about the other person who just has an affinity for a lot of things German and so on down the line? You have to craft a sales funnel that speaks to these different needs to capture all these people and push them down the funnel so you can convert them into cold, hard cash. Translating consumer intelligence into a workable content strategy. Sales funnels can be made of just conversion pages or content with conversion pages. A lot of marketers think that they just need to buy traffic and then dump this traffic on conversion pages. If that's your strategy, you can do that. I'll teach you how to do that effectively. However, if you are looking to save money or if you have no money at all, you can still make money online by using content to attract traffic from the internet for free and then plug this into conversion pages. You have to be mindful of which strategy you are using, conversion funnel only versus content funnel plus conversion funnel. Don't confuse content funnels with conversion funnels. Conversion funnels can work with paid traffic. You basically just buy traffic and dump it into a series of pages and what comes out is a sale. Pretty straightforward. I'll teach you how to optimize these later. But if you don't have any money or you're low on funds, you can use online content to pull traffic from search engines, social media platforms, and other sources for online traffic and plug these into your conversion pages. You need to know how these two alternative models work. You can't confuse the two. If you think they're one and the same, then you're playing the game wrong and it's no surprise that you are losing money hand over fist. Content funnels explained. Content funnels are all about building trust. For somebody to buy something from you, they must trust you. That's the bottom line. Content funnels are built on a central question. How do you get people to trust you online? First, you need to get them to understand that you know about their needs. Second, you have to get them to like your expertise or like your take or your understanding of their problems. This leads to trust. Once you get them to trust you, you can then push them to buy from you. The KLT process. KLT stands for know, like, and trust. Your content must be arranged in this way. The end result is trust. That's where you plug in your content funnel to your conversion funnel. The KLT process must drive your site's design, not the other way around. If you're going to create a content-dense website that uses a content funnel strategy, I suggest using the silo system. This starts out with general information, which is then linked to pages that have more detailed info. When people read these, it's easy for them to click from one page to the next, depending on how pumped up they are in finding more about the topic they're researching. These must be question-based so they're easier to digest. It's important that your whole website must be designed this way, so it seems effortless and doesn't take much thinking for people to navigate. They can start out very slow and low basically on pages dealing with general information, and as they click, they get deeper and deeper into more detailed information until they get comparisons and then they end up at trust pages, which essentially just push one particular product to them. What's important is that all their questions are asked as they go through the process. The KLT process must drive your promotion efforts. Now that you have set up your website based on questions, starting out with the K, knowledge pages, you must promote your site using your K pages. But what do I mean by that? Throughout the internet, people are asking questions. Maybe they're on Twitter. Perhaps they're on a Facebook group. Possibly they left a comment on a Facebook page post. Whatever form it takes. Usually people are asking questions. And when you look at how you should have set up your K pages, they're all about questions. Basically, you just look for these existing questions on the internet and then explain your content a bit and then drop a link to your content. 
You're not spamming because you are answering a question and you are providing a resource. It all depends on how you do this. You can't just drop a link and expect the reader to put two and two together and realize that you're not spamming. No, that doesn't work that way. Instead, people will think that you are spamming your link. You have to at least put in the effort to connect the question that they asked, the answer that's on your page, and then get them excited about learning more by the topic and then dropping the link. If you do that, your link is no longer spam, generally speaking. Instead, your link is actually a resource because you made a claim and then they can click on the link for more information. In other words, it acts as some sort of citation. This is not much different from reading an essay and basically being intrigued by a claim that's made, and if you want to investigate the claim more, there's a citation. The key to successfully using your K-Pages as part of your general online promotion efforts is to establish credibility and authority first. This means that when you're on forums, answer people's questions that may not have anything to do with your website. You have to be obvious with your need to help others. People hate traffic poachers. Basically, it's obvious that these people don't really care about the members of the community or the people reading their stuff. They just want to make money. You don't want to be that person, and how do you know you care? Share information. Go out of your way to help people, and then when you drop that link, your site will pull in people and then push them down the content funnel. The bottom line is, to live by the old saying, people are not going to care about what you know until they know that you care. Get that? Good. Content funnels explained. It all starts with K. Your content funnel starts with your knowledge of your audience's needs. They're not there to screw around. When somebody looks up how to immigrate to Canada on a search engine, they're looking for a page that will give them legal information on how they can leave their country so they can become citizens of Canada. They're not there to research dog food. They're not there to vacation in Hong Kong. They're looking for a specific type of information because they have specific needs. A well-constructed K page gets to the heart of the matter. Cut straight to the point. A well-constructed K page in a content sales funnel addresses specific questions. For example, if somebody wants to immigrate to Canada, the first thing that they want to ask is, am I qualified? Do I have the right education for it? Do I have the right background and experience? Your pages should be set up based on these questions. There are great resources online you can use to find these questions. The most common, of course, is Google AdWords Keyword Planner tool. You can also use a tool called AskTheAudience.com. Whatever the case may be, think of organizing your K pages around questions because people work with their problems in the form of questions. By organizing your content around questions, you make them easier to promote. Please understand that the human mind tends to navigate and process information in two forms, questions and stories. It's much easier to produce content based on questions. They're short, they're choppy, and they're easy to process. Why should you do things this way? If you paid attention to the way you yourself process information from the internet on your mobile device, you would understand this clearly. When was the last time you opened your Twitter app on your mobile device and just read everything very carefully? Probably never. Instead, most people would scan. They would basically just keep scrolling down their Facebook timeline and then if they see a keyword or an image, then they'd stop. That's how people process information, and if you ask me, that's the only way people can process information because there's just so much information on the Internet. In fact, according to some estimates, upwards of 2 million new pieces of information are created every single day. That's a mind-blowing amount. So, people have developed coping mechanisms, and one of them is just scanning. By organizing your content in the form of questions or around questions, you make it easy for people to read since they're easy to read and they're easier to promote. How? People are already asking questions related to your stuff on Twitter, Quora, and forums, and a variety of social media platforms. Your job is to find those places and slip your content into existing discussions. In other words, if you are in a forum, it's probably not good for you to create a specific discussion about what you're promoting. Believe me, people are not going to care. However, People will care when somebody already asked a question and then other people are giving their answers and then you come in and come up with a much better answer and then supply a stripped down version of your content and then you end with your link as some sort of source. That's how people will take you seriously. Of course, pay attention to what I said earlier. If you're going to all these places, 
Make sure you build credibility and authority first. Don't just get in, spam, and leave. You're going to get banned if you do that. Organize your question-based pages around themes. Just as questions can fall under a certain category, you can create articles around questions and then organize these articles around a category. This is not just a housekeeping tip. You're doing this so you can maximize the value of each page. Interlink your K pages in your content sales funnel for maximum effect. You can't just interlink saying that there's another page somewhere in your website. You have to organize these links based on questions or concerns and tie them around certain themes that you know your audience members would be interested in. Make each page count. Don't just write content just because you have nothing else better to do. Every single word, every single paragraph, every single page must have a purpose. That purpose should be obvious to you by now. Your purpose is to push people down the conversion funnel. Whether you are using a content funnel or an actual conversion funnel, your job with every new piece of content is to push them down to the next step, and the best way to do this is to amplify their desire or respect for your authority. Basically, you get them excited about the next step. To put this in practical terms, please understand that when people are looking for a basic question, they usually have another question in the back of their mind. For example, somebody goes to your pizza website because you have a page on how to bake a Napoli pizza. So, your first page lays out information regarding what a Napoli pizza is and a basic recipe. Pretty straightforward. However, you call people to action with key questions like how to get the right heat temperatures for your Napoli pizza, how to make sure you don't scorch the bottom of your pizza. In other words, you start with general information that clues people in. That's what they are looking for. Nonetheless, once they get that, they're going to be impressed because now you're drilling down. They know that once they start making their own Napoli pizza, there will be issues that would come up. Let me tell you, when I got a pizza recipe on the internet and I did it, it wasn't like the Pinterest pictures that I saw online. Not even close. Why? Because I didn't drill down and up. I didn't know about scorching the flour. I didn't know about manipulating the dough so there's no gooey, uncooked portion in the middle, that kind of thing. That's what people are going to be looking for because now you've given them basic information and then you're cluing them in by saying, well, there are other stuff that you need to know and if you don't do these, you're not going to get the results that you're looking for. So people who are truly interested in the topic will start seeing those and basically, you are calling them to action to click deeper and deeper into the bowels of your website. Compare this to basically just random interlinking where you go from one page to just another regular page, which may not be all that related. You're not going to be building authority. People are just going to bounce out of that page because that's not the information they're looking for. You have to start with a general question and then create subsidiary pages that are based on closely related questions and this maintains the interest of the person and then actually amplifies their desire for a specific product or solution later on. That's how you build trust and credibility at the same time. When they click on these links, they find themselves deeper and deeper into your website and they give themselves more opportunities to really absorb the knowledge that you are giving them. The whole point here is to demonstrate to them that you are sufficiently knowledgeable about your niche. If you're able to do this, then you start building trust. They then are more likely to like your take on their problem. Establish credibility and authority by using multimedia. As the old saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. This means that if you really want to maximize the amount of authority and credibility you're building in the minds of your target audience members, you need to use the power of multimedia. I am, of course, talking about videos, pictures, diagrams, infographics, you name it. This not only makes your content easier to read, it also makes sure that people aren't bored by your content. Please understand that most people now view online content through mobile devices. They don't have all the time in the world to keep scrolling as you crank out massive blocks of text. You might want to break those pieces of text up. You may want to shorten those pieces of text and break up the boredom by using a picture, a diagram, or a video. If you do this, you are more likely to keep them on the same page and you also increase the likelihood that they will click on a link to get deeper and deeper into your website. A quick word about third-party multimedia content. Please don't interpret what I just said in the section above into some sort of mad dash to appropriate other people's intellectual property. You can't just take a video off YouTube and embed it in your content simply because it's related to your content's topic. That might land you in hot water. 
You have to do it the right way. Whether you're using infographics from Pinterest, videos from YouTube, explanatory photos from Pinterest or Instagram, you have to respect the rights of the owners or creators of this content. How do you do that? Very simple. Give them attribution and link to them. I know you're probably paranoid about your website becoming some sort of traffic leak. I understand where you're coming from. You worked hard to create all this content, and you obviously worked hard to drive traffic to your site. It would be a shame to see much of that traffic go to these third-party links and never to come back to your website again. Believe me, I get that. However, here are some ways you can make these concerns go away. Make attribution links open in a new tab. If you're worried about losing traffic because of your attribution links, make those links open a new tab. This way, when a visitor to your website clicks on that link, a new tab is created. Your tab is still open. You haven't lost that person. They can look at that content, check out the website that created the infographic that they're interested in, and then once they're done, they can close that and go back to your site. Pretty straightforward. Use materials from non-competitors. This is the most important piece of advice I can give you in regard to third-party multimedia content. Remember, you're using this multimedia content to make your content more interesting. You're using it to add life and context to your content. However, if you don't get the content from the right people, you will end up promoting your competitors. Who wants to do that? These people are basically pushing the same products and services as you. You just made their lives easier. I'm sure that's not your goal, right? The best way to do this is to look at the different infographics, videos, and explanatory photos and other multimedia elements that are closely related to your content and then look at their sources. Are they directly competing with you or are they kind of a general knowledge site that is basically just monetized by AdSense or they are a nonprofit? If they're the latter, they're probably not competitors. They're not pushing a particular product. They're not doing a hard sell. So use their content and attribute to them. If you play this right, you will create a win-win situation. They get traffic and awareness, and you get context and excitement for your content. Everybody can win, but you need to play the game the right way. The whole point of the K level of your content sales funnel is dwell time. What is dwell time? Dwell time is the term Google uses to describe the time people spend going from page to page on your website. Studies show that the longer the dwell time, the higher the chance the person will either come back, sign up for a mailing list, or even buy a product. In other words, the longer you keep somebody on your website reading articles and other content, the higher the chance you can convert that person into dollar bills. That's the bottom line. Remember, dwell time also helps your SEO. If you want to get more highly targeted traffic from search engines, maximize dwell time because this is factored in by Google's rank brain algorithm when it comes time to rank your website. The higher your dwell time, the higher your rank on Google. Understanding your content funnels L pages. A lot of people misunderstand the role of L pages. L pages, of course, stand for like pages. These are pages intended to push people to trust your brand enough to buy from you. In other words, these L pages assume that when people click over to them, they know enough about the basic information of your niche. They're not trying to answer general questions. L pages don't share basic info. I just want you to be clear about this. When you create an L page, you're not saying to the reader why you are interested in this stuff or people are interested in this type of product. They don't want that. That's introductory stuff. For example, if somebody is looking to bake Napolitano-style pizza, they go first to a K page that tells them that Napoli-style pizza came from Naples in Italy. It was brought by Italian immigrants to the United States. It is a very tasty form of pizza. It's puffy, so on and so forth. When people go to an L page from that original K page, they don't want to be told the same info. They already know the background. Now, they want specifics, like how not to burn their Napoli pizza too much. What kind of pieces are available to produce the very best Neapolitan-style pizza? You get the point. They're looking for deeper information, which would then eventually lead them to buying a product. They have deeper needs at this point. Don't waste their time by rehashing basics or intro. It just erodes your credibility and authority. When people land on an L page, you should safely assume that they already know about the categorical options available to them. L pages are all about distinction. L pages are all about pushing your prospect to one type of product category over another. In other words, 
since a reader ended up on your L page, they already think you are credible to a certain degree. Now, they're basically open or susceptible to you suggesting to them one particular broad category of solutions over another. In many cases, this involves disabusing them of earlier held beliefs regarding other options. L pages must interlink to produce this disabusing effect. Remember the whole point of L pages is to create distinction in the mind of the prospective buyer. Prior to this point, they were at the K page level and they're basically saying, well, there are so many options out there and they're basically the same. The job of a well-written L page is to say, no, they're not. How do you make your case? You can say that there are different levels. There are different categories. There are different types. There are different brands. There are different products. You put it all together by creating L pages that compare these. So, with the different levels, you list them down. You say, top level, bottom level, and then explain why. In terms of categories, you just pit category versus category. You would say this is one particular category of solution and this is another. These are weaknesses and strengths, pros and cons, you name it. When it comes to types, just put type versus type. Again, walk them through the advantages and disadvantages. The same goes with brand versus brand and product versus product. Get a clear idea on the different forms of L pages. L pages are all about comparisons. They're all about contrasting different options to highlight in the minds of prospective buyers why your particular option is superior to everybody else. The best way to do this is through some sort of comparison model. These take many different forms. These can be side-by-side -side product comparisons, categorical comparisons, categorical consumer guides regarding different broad types of products, brand-by-brand -brand comparisons, and other types of comparisons that enable consumers to compare and contrast different options available to them. Set up your comparisons using a funnel. I can't advise you to just slap together some reviews and call it a day. People who land on those reviews wouldn't know what to do with them. You haven't set them up properly. It's like trying to ask a girl to marry you the moment you just meet her. That doesn't make any sense. You have to set her up first, right? The same applies to L pages. You can't just go straight to a comparison. Remember, they're coming from K pages, which is basically establishing your credibility. So, you have to have some sort of intermediary set of pages that highlights, in broad terms, the different options out there and why your preferred class of solutions makes the most sense in the lives of your prospective audience members. You have to qualify people first. You have to understand that a lot of people may bounce off your website. They might think, this is not the information I'm looking for. And that's fine. They were never your customers to begin with. They weren't going to buy from you anyway. What's important is you focus on people who are suggestible. These are people you can persuade or otherwise influence to eventually buy from you. Set up your comparisons to win. A lot of people think that if they just put up a comparison of different products that somehow, some way, the prospective buyer will know what to do. Well, chances are they'll get pieces of information from your comparison chart and buy somewhere else. This happens all the time to Amazon affiliate marketers. It's really sad that they do all the heavy lifting and research, only to end up with a whole lot of nothing because their prospective customers spend their hard-earned dollars somewhere else. You don't want that to happen to you. So, you have to set up your comparisons in an underhanded way. Basically, just by looking at the comparisons, it becomes abundantly clear what direction you're pushing them to. Is this underhanded? Yes, but it doesn't have to be unethical. If you lay out the facts, then ultimately, it's the consumer's choice. It's all about playing up your strongest hand. Selling anything online and offline is like playing poker. You want to work with your strongest hand. Even the worst product in the world can still be positioned in such a way that it can be bought. And it all boils down to highlighting your strongest feature. Even the ugliest woman on the planet can still find a date if she positions herself right. Maybe she's got a great sense of humor. Maybe a lot of people think she is smart as a whip. That's good enough for a lot of guys. So do yourself a big favor. Even if you're selling a dog of a product, look at its strongest point. Maybe it has really cheap shipping. Maybe it has amazing customer support infrastructure behind it. Look for your strongest product and compare the different alternative options based on your strongest point. Just as a very ugly woman is not going to compare herself to a supermodel, you shouldn't compare your product to its category killer. That doesn't make any sense. 
you have to position the category killer based on its weakest point, which happens to be the strongest point for your product. That's how you get a sale. That's how you get into the head of even the most skeptical consumer. Call the reader to action. A lot of people think that call to action phrases only apply to sales pages. They're clueless about the fact that even content pages have to have a call to action. You have to understand that if consumers are unclear as to the next action they're going to take, they can be relied on to do nothing. Unfortunately, when they do that, they don't put any money in your bank account. You don't see extra dollars in your online bank account. That's just not going to happen because your website's visitors are confused. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. They don't know what steps to take next. You have to take the initiative for them. You have to spell it out. Assume that everybody that ends up on your website has an 8th grade education. Keep it simple. You'd be surprised as to how hard you can push people down the content conversion funnel until you get them eating off the palm of your hands. Make sure your content funnel integrates well with your conversion funnel. Too many marketers obsess about conversion funnels. Too many marketers just focus all their firepower on their conversion pages. I really can't say I blame them because these are your bread and butter pages. These pages determine whether you're going to make $1,000 a month, $100 a month, or $100,000 a month. This is where the magic happens, and I understand that. But the problem is these pages don't exist in a vacuum. They're part of a larger context that ultimately resolve around your brand. And if you're so short-sighted that you can only see bits and pieces of the overall picture, then you only have yourself to blame if you're not making as much money as you would have hoped. This is pretty much the reason why a lot of online marketers can't, for the life of them, make the thousands of dollars that other people are making. It's not because they're dumb. It's because they're focusing on the wrong things. You need a tight fit between your info pages and conversion pages. You have to make sure that you use calls to action to get people to where you need them to go. Unfortunately, when marketers set up K and L pages, they skip the T pages. This is an often fatal mistake. If somebody's making $5,000 a month from their online store and they committed this error, you can safely bet that that person's actual unrealized income is $50,000 a month. A lot is lost in translation because they skipped a very vital part of the overall sales conversion content and sales conversion process. These are not linked up properly. Think about the plumbing in your home. If you have a faulty pipe, then regardless of how much water comes through your home, by the time it gets to the faucet, you're just going to have to settle for a dribble. Do you see how this works? The same applies to sales. Don't neglect your T pages. T pages stands for trust pages. These are the pages where people go from liking a particular category of solutions or even collection of products you're pushing to trusting a specific product or service solution. The most common form of T page is an individual product review page. At the end of the day, once the prospect has gone from K page to the L page, they basically have a very good idea of what's out there and they're ready to decide. Now, they're basically properly educated. Your T page then should get straight to the point. It should basically just say, okay, these are the reasons why you should trust this particular product. Please understand that whatever you're talking about on the T page must relate to what went on before at the L page. So if the L page convinced the reader that the hallmarks of a superior product is one, two, three, your T page better mention one, two, three. Besides individual product review pages, another common form of a T or trust page are the product description pages on e-commerce sites. This is when people go to an online catalog and they click on the product link and then they see the product described. That is a T page. The anatomy of successful T pages. Successful T pages really are psychological in nature. You must remember that people are buying products for benefits. They couldn't care less about features. Maybe you're selling a washing machine and it has five modes. It only takes up 10 kilowatt hours or whatnot. Consumers couldn't care less about features. They do care about benefits. Understand the difference. The difference between features and benefits. Features are technical in nature. They're about screen size, screen brightness, certain new technology. Benefits, on the other hand, are psychological in nature. If somebody's buying a washing machine, they're looking to save time. They're looking for more control over their life. They're looking for more time with their loved ones. So, how are you going to repackage a time-saving feature? It has a nice fancy name. 
into terms that your end buyer would appreciate. So, you talk about spending more time with your children. You talk about him being able to do more with less money and living life to the fullest. This is how benefits work because benefits ultimately are personal in nature. Remember, most American consumers couldn't care less about the features or the jargon that are on your sales pages. They care about what's important to them. Remember, just as you ask yourself, what's in it for me? Other people ask themselves that question as well. It is all personal. So, you have to phrase whatever benefits that your product brings to the table in those terms. The essence of effective key pages are calls to action. They have different forms, but the key to them is emotional impact. When crafting a CTA, call to action, emotionally tie the reader to the benefit they will get if they buy the product or service. The different types of calls to action. Call to action using emotional triggers. Example, take your life to the next level by saving at least 80% on your next vacation. Click here. Calls to action involving authority. Example, 9 out of 10 plastic surgeons swear by this product. Call to action using social proof. Example, click here to get the number one rated laptop solution for insurance professionals. The key to calls to action is to get away from just saying click here or order now. When you do that, you waste momentum. Instead, amplify the sense of need in the mind of your prospect. Please understand that once they get to a page where there's a call to action, your content pages or your conversion pages have already done most of the heavy lifting. Don't waste it by just saying order now. Plug into some sort of emotional urgency. Understand your conversion options. Converting online traffic into dollars is not as straightforward as you think. A lot of newbie marketers are under the impression that if they buy traffic and enough of these users click on page after page, eventually they will land on a conversion page, read something that they like, and then whip out their credit card. If only things were that simple. Believe me, if that's your strategy, you're probably going to be settling for cents on the dollars, assuming you make any money at all. The better approach would be to study what kind of conversion strategy works best considering whatever it is you're trying to sell. Different products and services need different conversion strategies. A lot of marketers are completely clueless about this because they think there is only one cookie cutter or one size fits all solution to turning interest into sales. This is where they screw up because selling a sofa online is very different from trying to get American grooms looking for Filipina brides. These are two totally different sets of needs and you have to speak to them differently. In other words, your strategy has to fit the outcome you are looking for. There is no such thing as a one-size-fits-all conversion strategy. Different conversion strategies. If you are selling a high-ticket item, let's say a gold IRA conversion kit which can involve hundreds of thousands of dollars, you need to take it slow. You need to basically drip-feed information to your audience so they can build trust over an extended period of time. And as they engage with your content and as they see your content again and again, that level of trust deepens until they go to the like stage and then before you know it, they get to the trust stage and then they buy. Of course, this is not guaranteed. This is not a slam dunk. But you have to get the process going considering the dollar value of the transaction. If you're looking for somebody to transfer their retirement fund worth hundreds of thousands of dollars from one fund to a gold fund that you're an affiliate of, you have to invest in a long funnel that builds trust over an extended period of time. On the other hand, if you're looking for a quick sale, your conversion funnel can be shorter. In other words, you can basically tell the reader if they're going to ship or get off the pot. It's pretty straightforward. For example, there's no need to create a mailing list for certain types of one-time use product. If people are just going to use a product once, either they want it or they don't, because if you're going to build a mailing list which sends them update after update, to try to remind them and push them closer and closer to the conversion end of the content funnel, you might not get there. It turns out that the reason why they got on your list in the first place is because they want your freebie or your lead magnet. There are very different conversion strategies, and each of these is manifested in different funnels. At the very least, there are three. Page only. This model just uses one page to convert traffic. It doesn't matter whether the traffic is free, organic, or paid. This conversion strategy just uses one page to convert the visitor. Pay attention to how sales pages are set up. They're quite clever. They would start with an attention-grabbing header, and then they would try to pull the reader down the page. They would use all sorts of tricks to build credibility and stoke demand for their product that is being pushed. They would use testimonials. They would use fancy graphs. Whatever the case may be, 
The idea is when a person manages to read all the way through that page, other people didn't make it all the way through. In other words, that page acted as a funnel. Basically, it filtered people who were not really all that serious. Usually, the people who really want to buy your stuff or who could be influenced to buy your stuff make it all the way through. That's how you should set up your conversion page. Content plus sales page. The content plus sales page model uses a variety of content using the KLT process, and once people end up on the T content pages, they are pushed to the conversion page. Generally speaking, the sales page that are tied into a series of content pages or a content funnel tend to be shorter. Why? Most of the heavy lifting is already done by the T content pages. By dumping them into a page only type sales page, you might actually end up contradicting yourself or losing the attention of your potential buyer. At the very least, you run the risk of losing momentum, so don't do it. Content plus email capture page. This is pretty much the same as the category above, but instead of the sales page, it leads to an email capture page. Your product or service offering also determines your mailing list incentives. As I've mentioned above, you don't necessarily have to build a mailing list for all sales funnels. Forget what other self-proclaimed marketing gurus tell you. Some people would always tell you that you need to build a mailing list. Well, if your product is very specific and it's a one-time use, you can get by with just a sales pitch. You don't necessarily have to get a sales page that's plugged into by a network of content pages. It all depends on both your audience and product or service you are promoting. Optimizing your funnels. Optimizing your conversion funnels. Conversion funnels differ quite a bit. Some are just made of one sales page. Others involve different sales pages that plug into each other. Even others use a mailing list. You have to optimize each of these differently. Start with elements. When you're optimizing a conversion sales page, it's very tempting to change everything and hope for the best. I'm telling you, that strategy is no strategy at all. Because even if you're successful, you don't know which change accounted for your success. What if you can tweak other elements to get even better results? Unfortunately, if you just changed everything, you're left in the dark as to which change actually accounted for the drastic improvement in your results. Element by element optimization explained. Element by element conversion page optimization really boils down to slicing and dicing each conversion page into different elements and plugging them into a systematic and orderly testing system. For example, graphics are elements, header or text are elements, actual sales body text are elements. The same with calls to action. The key to success here is to optimize each element one at a time. Don't jump from element to element. For each element, come up with variations. Run your traffic test, and if you see a winner, make variations of that. See if any of the variations get better results than the first variation. Keep repeating this evolutionary process until you reach a point where you cannot optimize your element any further. In other words, you can't get any further improvements in conversions. Once that happens, you switch over to the next element and optimize that as well. Keep repeating this process until you end up with a sales page or a series of sales pages that convert at their fullest potential. You can use the same strategy for your mailing list as well. You can optimize your squeeze page, and you can use the same strategy for your mailing list updates. Optimizing your content funnel. You also have to optimize your content funnel just like your conversion funnel. It's not as bad as you think. It really all boils down to your statistics. For every 10 pieces of content you publish on your blog, only one of them will account for most of the traffic you get. Identify the theme of that successful content and publish more on that theme. Create variations. If you notice an upward trajectory of the traffic you're getting, this means you are on the right track. It means you're talking about the right topics. Keep exploring different subtopics so you can keep increasing the organic traffic your blog or website attracts from the rest of the internet. Optimize how your content funnel plugs into your conversion funnel. Look at the series of pages people go through as they navigate your website. Do you notice that a certain path is more popular than the rest? Read each page on that path and see if you can recreate that path for new pieces of content. If you get to the point where you can repeat that same success, then make this the default path for all the content on your blog. This is not something that happens overnight. It requires a tremendous amount of traffic. It also requires quite a bit of patience. But the good news is, if you're able to do this, you can maximize dwell time and also boost overall conversions because you are plugging a larger chunk of your traffic to your conversion pages.
This is crucial, especially if you're not paying for traffic on Facebook and Google.